what's up guys today i'm gonna teach you guys how you can create this six stop motion masking edit for instagram reels or any other short form content let's go What's up guys, my name is Evan Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorials. As I mentioned, today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how you can create this sick masking paper stop motion effect edit or whatever you wanna call it. A real quick big shout out today to the short form queen, AKA Katie for being the inspiration for today's edit. Katie's the, the absolute goat at making snackable or short form content on Instagram and Reels. And her style is really dope, dealing a lot with bright, vibrant colors and stop motion paper effects. So if you don't follow her on Instagram, definitely make sure to go check out her profile. She posts dope stuff there. And Katie, big props to you dude keep it up but one last thing before we get started if you're interested in spicing up your edit game definitely make sure to check out our preset store at 11%.net there we seriously spill all the sauce and when i say spill all the sauce we're spilling it everywhere like i pour my heart and soul out into creating preset packs that would just help speed up your editing workflow and just make your edits look really dope i made these presets as something i wish i had when i started out editing so really if you have like at least 10 seconds in your day to check out the 11%.net store it mean a lot and because i love you guys if you guys use this promo code right here you can get an exclusive 40% off your first purchase 40% guys you're basically robbing me but yeah definitely make sure to check out the store we have preset packs ranging from Lightroom presets all the way to title card presets it's really dope stuff there but without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into tutorial all right guys so now that we're inside of After Effects I have all my clips right here imported from our Insta360 now this was all edited inside the Insta360 app but if you don't have Insta360 and took your photos with your iPhone I recommend just stitching together your clips and then just creating like a little animation as it like spins around and then having that set aside. Now, right here, I basically just trimmed through and then cut up all the clips to all the good parts. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically line up all these shoes right now. So quick hotkey, um, if you would like to speed up your editing workflow in After Effects, you can go ahead and hit the bracket key, the left bracket key on all of these clips right here. I think you can just select all of them and then just hit the bracket key and it'll bring all your clips to your playhead. So now that we have all our clips in our playhead, excuse this bottom layer, I'm just gonna turn off the visibility. What we're gonna do is is we're basically just going to line up all the clips until they reach with that like that high point that peak when we throw whatever object it is into the air so right here it looks like that's like the peak where the shoe is in the air so now what i'm going to do is just one by one i'm just going to line it up until it matches with all the other peaks of all the other shoes so right there that looks like the high point that right there that also looks like the high point there kind of looks like the high point there is another high point point. and now what we're going to do is we're just basically going to add some animation to this so we're just going to trim down each of these clips until it like makes like a little nice staircase pattern and we're just going to do the same on the reverse side of it so then that way once you play it out you have this like flash through effect of all these different shoes or objects or whatever it is you're throwing into the air you might want to have to like trim and adjust just so that um, it matches with the effect and if by any chance there's some offset in the time like you catch one of your objects too soon you can always of course just hit command shift d to split that layer and then you can just drag and adjust it um, to the time spot or the area in the frame that you need that object so that it matches with the other objects. And ta-da, mess around with it enough until you have like a nice little seamless toss and there we go. Don't worry about this like cuts between your character because we're gonna be zooming in and adding some camera effects all later to just cover that up. So don't worry about that. And now once you have this nice little camera shot, we can just go ahead and move on to the next spot. So now right here, this is jump right here. We're going to add some rotoscoping to this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the frame the first frame when you take off when you take flight and then you're gonna hit command shift D to split that clip and then go to the very last frame when you're in the air and then hit command shift D to split that frame once again now what we're gonna do is we're going to double click this layer and we are going to rotoscope it now for those of you who don't know how to rotoscope we do have a very quick five minute rotoscope tutorial right here but I am just gonna show you real quick in this tutorial grab your roto brush tool right here in the top left hand corner and then simply just drag and select a green outline over your subject. If you get a little yellow error message saying that there's like a frame rate mismatch, just simply go over here to your composition, composition settings, and then match the frame rate to whatever that frame rate is on the yellow bar. If there's any areas you don't like, hold option or alt to turn your roto brush red and deselect those areas, and then just continue on with the roto brush process. We are going to speed this section up. And once you're done with the roto brush process, just simply freeze all these frames by clicking the freeze frame. And we're just gonna speed this section up as well. 
Now, once you have your rotoscope section, you're just gonna come back to your main composition and you'll see we have a nice rotoscope subject. Now, this is pretty cool. Now it's time to go ahead and add that background animation. So now we can go ahead and start actually aligning our video clip. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select the opening video shot along with all the rest of the other shoe scenes and we're just going to drag this to the very beginning. So that's the opening shot when we throw the shoe into the sky and we have that nice collage effect. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select the rest of these clips which are going to be the jump and we are going to drag this right after here so that it seamlessly cuts to this nice rotoscope jump. Now, of course, it's time to go ahead and add the spin around scene from our Insta360. So right before the camera starts spinning, I'm just gonna cut it right there. And then when the camera starts spinning, we're just gonna go all the way very back to the very beginning, hit Command Shift D to trim it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed up this clip. So I'm gonna right click it, I'm gonna hit time, and I'm gonna hit time stretch. And then I'm gonna change the stretch factor to something like 17. So that way we have a really fast spin around effect right here. Now you can see it's moving really fast. I'm gonna go ahead and hold shift and drag this right here to the beginning of that rotoscope jump. And because I want this nice paper stop motion feel effect, it doesn't really matter if your scene, if your, your footage is like super high frame rate. So I know I said you could shoot it on 60 frames per second, but it actually doesn't even actually matter that much. So what you're gonna do is you're going to right click the rotoscope layer as well, and we are going to pre-compose it first. Very, very important. So you can call this roto jump. Um, pre-compose it first and then I don't know why but pre-compose it right click it again and pre-compose it just again just trust me it it helps now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually slow down this jump clip so I'm going to right click it I'm gonna hit time and time stretch and I'm going to change this value to something like 230 and hit OK, and there we go. Now we have both our rotoscope jump and the background Insta360 zoom around, both at like the same equal length, and we can just go ahead and drag that last clip to the very end. Now it's time to go ahead and spice it up, add the spicy stuff, the, the stuff that really puts this effect together. Number one, we're gonna be adding some like paper background animation cutout. Now this effect, this is, this is really common, especially, shout out Katie. Katie really kills it with this the paper like background effect. She's really good at this. It adds outline to your effect and it makes things just feel a lot more realistic and like picture book like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag in this paper um, I just downloaded from Google, just search up paper texture. Uh, I'll link to this one below in the description as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm just simply going to draw a mask, a very rough, rough, rough mask around my subject. It doesn't have to be that great because it's paper. So just cut it out and boom, there you go. And now what your job is to do is basically hit the drop down on mask and mask one, hit a keyframe at the mask path at the very beginning of this jump and you're simply just going to animate this clip. So there we go, we have a nice little sick paper outline effect. And now what we're gonna do is we're simply just going to go to the ends and I'm gonna hit Command Shift D to trim off these edges right here. And I'm just gonna do the same for the end. And now I'm going to select both the rotoscope layer and the paper effect. And I'm going to right click them and I'm going to hit pre-compose. I'm gonna call this paper outline jump. Boom, there we go. Now I'm just going to make sure I trim the edges once again. I just don't like having these edges in After Effects. It, it just really messes up my workflow and gets me confused. So just try to make sure you keep your workspace organized and clean. And now you can see we have this jump and it looks super sick. Uh, we have a nice paper outline effect. Now let's of course go ahead and add some drop shadow. You can't have a paper effect without some drop shadow. So I'm just going to increase the opacity a bit and increase the distance. And then we're going to increase the softness, of course, as well. And there we go. Now we have some nice shadow and it makes it feel a lot more paper-like. And then lastly, the big effect that just totally wraps this thing up is posterized time. We're gonna drag, search and drag posterized time to this outlined effect and we're going to change the frame rate to 12. And the reason being so is because it adds a nice little paper stop motion feel effect to this jump. And then when we land, it's back in the normal original frame rate. Now it's time to pre-compose this whole thing and add some camera movements, sound effects, and some final color grades to just wrap this thing up. Select everything in your timeline, and we're just gonna pre-compose it and call this final cut. Voila, there we go, there we have it. We have a nice like full clip of just everything we literally edited. What the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna search and apply a transform effect right here. I honestly don't like using After Effects cameras. Call me crazy, I'm just, it's just overcomplicate stuff for no 
no reason. What we're going to do now is we have to hide out the fact that our character is like just changing all and cutting all these frames because we made a bunch of cuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a keyframe at the position and scale at the very last frame before I throw the shoe into the air. And then when the shoe is all the way up into the air at the highest point, I'm going to zoom all the way in and move all the way up. So that way the camera is zoomed all the way in into the shoe. And if you play that, you can see we have this nice sick camera movement zoom in. And then when the shoe comes down, I'm going to just drag the position back down so that we just follow the general overall movement of the shoe and it comes back to the original spot. So that way we have a nice little camera movement. I'm gonna hit the drop down on transform as well, just so I can check out these keyframes going on right here. And then once again, of course, I'm gonna add a scale keyframe and then I'm going to zoom all the way out to the original scale and the original position as well, right before I make that jump. And when we play that out, you can see we have this nice sick camera movement. And right there, there's a little inconsistency in the cut right there. As you can see, one of the shoe kind of like just doesn't match up with the frame. So that's why it's important to just make sure you match cut. But because of the timing of this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and fix that later, whatever. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a radio blur over here. I'm going to add search and apply radio blur. And just again, of course, apply it to this pre-comp. And right here at the prime spot of this the the shoe height i'm going to drag and adjust the anchor point to where the shoe is and i'm going to add a keyframe at the amount at 10 in the very middle of this the peak of the shoe being thrown into the air and then at the very beginning i'm going to set the keyframe back to zero and then at the very end when we catch the shoe right when we catch the shoe i'm going to set the amount of the radio blur back again to zero so that we that way we have this nice radio blur effect and it looks like we're motion tracking the shoe or whatever and lastly of course it's time to go ahead and add some camera shake before we turn into a paper person so i'm going to use sapphire shake for those of you who don't have sapphire shake get it it's it's like goaded I, I don't know i don't know what else to say to you what else you could do is you could just add another adjustment layer with a transform effect and you can just mess around with the transform and the scale so that you have like some artificial shake but the sapphire shake really really helpful not essential not required but it's, yeah just really helpful so i'm just going to set the amplitude to zero of course right before i jump so i'm zooming in i'm going to hit the drop down on the sapphire shake as well just so i can see these keyframes and right before i jump i'm going to hit a keyframe at this amplitude at zero and then when I jump and turn into the paper person I'm going to change the amplitude to like 1.4 so that way we have a lot of shake going on right here and then I'm going to go a couple frames after and change it back to zero very important part turn on the motion blur turn on the motion blur that really like wraps together the entire effect and if you play that out you can see we have this sick camera shake going on right here I'm going to go ahead and select all these keyframes, hit Command C to copy them. And then right before I turn back into a normal person, like right before I land, I'm just going to paste this shake again so that we have a nice shake that occurs before I land. And it just helps make the, the effect feel a little bit more seamless. And then, of course, I'm going to search and apply for a Lumetri color. This way I can just go ahead and add some shot like light flashes and I don't know, they just overall help make everything feel a lot better and more intense. So I'm just gonna hit the drop down on this Lumetri color, basic color correction, light, and then I'm gonna hit a keyframe and exposure at zero. When we have all that shake going on, I'm going to increase this exposure up to like two and then a couple frames after and I'm gonna change the exposure back down to zero. And then same, just like we did with the shake, I'm gonna hit Command C by, and select all those keyframes. And then I'm just going to paste it again when I jump at the very beginning. And that way it just helps make things feel a little bit cooler. One last thing, I almost forgot. I always love to do this. It just helps tie things in. I'm gonna double click this and I'm gonna zoom in right here to this, this jump right here. And I'm going to add, shout out to my friend, Creative Flow. He has this sick paper, like mixed media texture pack and I love to use it. It has all these crazy, insane, sick, paper textures so i'm just going to drag and apply one of his textures right here shout out to his store if you want to go cop this pack you can cop it at his store at creativeflow.com i believe i'm just going to drag this in i'm going to transform it rotate it to about 90 degrees and then i'm going to come over here to layer blending mode and i'm going to change this to screen no take that back I'm gonna hit layer and I'm gonna hit blending mode and I'm gonna change this to add. There you go. Now we have some sick paper like effects going on right here. I'm just gonna make sure that I drag and trim this 
paper effect to occur only when I'm jumping and like a paper person. That way, when we have that shake, it just turns into this sick paper texture effect and then we land. And with that guys, there is the final result. Of course, I recommend you going in, adding some sound effects to really just spice this thing up. But yeah, shout out to Katie, shout out to Cash Bunny. And with that, here's the final result. If you guys made it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you again so much for watching. Big shout out to Katie once again. Make sure to go follow her on Instagram at the short form queen. She's posting dope content there all the time. And of course, if you're interested in copying some of our preset packs, remember to use this promo code right here for an exclusive 40% off your first purchase. 40% guys. Oh, and also did I tell you that it expires in five days? Yeah, leave a comment below if you had any questions or concerns throughout the entirety of this tutorial. And lastly, of course, if you're interested in earning with us and making some extra side income through our preset pack store, we do have an affiliate program and you can earn up to 50% of your commission sales. If you're interested, we have more info on our Discord server. All links are in the description below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.